Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is circular area and cylindrical volume. Our objective is to learn how to calculate circular area and cylindrical volume, critical properties which influence actuator strength and speed in fluid power systems. Additionally, we'll examine common unit conversions encountered hydraulics and pneumatics. This lecture operates under the presumption that viewers are passing familiarity with basic math, scientific calculators, and unit conversion. If you're a little rusty on these topics or lack confidence in these skills, by all means, check out the prerequisite math lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel and bring yourself up to speed. The principal linear actuator employed in both hydraulic and pneumatic systems, the cylinder, is, as its name implies, cylindrical in shape. It is therefore worthy of our time to familiarize ourselves with the calculation of circular area and cylindrical volume, as these properties, among others, influence actuator force and speed in fluid power systems. As you're no doubt aware, a circle is a shape with two sides, an inside and an outside. I never tire of that joke. More accurately, a circle can be defined using two properties. One, the radius, R, being a line that travels from the center to one edge, or two, the diameter, D, being a line that goes from edge to edge, passing through the center. Radius is half of diameter, Diameter is twice the radius. Makes sense, right? For the purposes of these initial exercises, we'll express radius and diameter using U.S. customary dimensions of inches. We'll explore metric calculations before we bring this lecture to a close. Circular surface area, expressed in units of square inches, is dependent upon radius and diameter. Circles with larger radii and larger diameters have larger surface areas i.e. you can fit more equal sized squares inside a larger circle. Conversely, circles with smaller radii and smaller diameters have smaller surface areas, i.e. you can fit less equal sized squares inside a smaller circle. There exist two formulas commonly used to calculate circular surface area, one that employs radius and the other employing diameter. For technical purposes, my sincere advice is to forget radius and use only diameter for this simple reason. Hydraulic and pneumatic cylinders, when purchased from a fluid power equipment manufacturer, are ordinarily specified only in terms of diameter and not radius. The formula of choice suggests circular surface area is equal to pi over 4 times diameter squared. As simple as this formula may seem, a number of traps exist for those unaccustomed to the order of operations and proper use of the scientific calculator not to mention engineering format and rounding. First, consider the ratio pi over 4. Pi in all its transcendental glory is available on the Texas Instruments TI-89 Titanium Edition Scientific Graphing Calculator, made in China, as second carat. Of note, this calculator is set up to display numbers using engineering format, whereby a coefficient is multiplied by specific powers of 10. One can enter pi over 4 as second carat, divide by 4, and press enter. A scientific calculator using engineering format might return the value of 785.39, etc., E negative 3, which means 785.39, etc., times 10 raised to the negative 3, or 0.78539, etc., etc. For this reason, you're often going to see the circular surface area formula written as 0.784 times diameter squared or 0.7854 is a reasonably accurate approximation of pi over 4 round to the 10,000th place. For the purposes of this course, I'm recommending you don't use this approximation since the calculator is authorized in this course and it'd be foolish not to put this most powerful of tools to work to its full capacity. This being said, think about the number 0.7854 as it relates to a circle with a diameter of 1 inch and compare it to the surface area of a square with a side length of 1 inch. A square with a side length of 1 inch has a surface area of 1 times 1, or 1 square inch, whereas a circle with a diameter of 1 has a surface area of roughly 0.7854 square inches. When you overlay the circle on the square, the difference is obvious. A circle with the same diameter as a square has less surface area than the square, approximately 21 percentage less, because the circle does not include the corners, whereas the square does. Let this be a quick check of your work. Circles always have maybe around 79% of the area of a square with similar dimensions. If your calculations suggest otherwise, you are doing it wrong and you need to do a hasty retreat and reassess your work. 
Let's try a couple of illustrated examples of this calculation. Consider circles with the following dimensions. Circle 1 with a diameter of 5 inches. Circle 2 with a diameter of 2.5 inches. Circle 3 with a radius, note the dramatic pronunciation, radius of 6 inches. And finally, circle 4, the top of a 55 gallon barrel with a diameter of 22.5 inches. Given this information, calculate surface area in units of square inches rounded to the tenths place for each circle. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Substituting the diameter for circle 1 in the circular surface area equations suggests circle 1 has a surface area of roughly 19.6 square inches. Similarly, substituting the diameter for circle 2 into the circular surface area equation suggests circle 2 has a surface area of roughly 4.9 square inches. Before we move on to example 3, you note that circle 1 has twice the diameter of circle 2. As a result, circle 1 has four times the surface area of circle 2 because the area calculation squares diameter. One might make the general observation that surface area grows geometrically with linear increases in diameter. Double the diameter, area increases by 4, and so on. Moving on, circle 3 is specified using radius. Diameter is 2 times radius. A circle with a radius of 6 inches has a diameter of 12 inches. Substituting the diameter for circle 3 into the circular surface area equation suggests circle 3 has a surface area of roughly 113.1 square inches. Lastly, substituting the diameter for circle 4, the 55 gallon drum lid, into the circular surface area equation suggests the drum lid has a surface area of roughly 397.6 square inches. Make a note of these answers for this first set of illustrated examples because we use them later calculations. Alright, hopefully that wasn't too hard, was it? Let's examine some additional applications of circular surface area calculations. Consider this real world application. Oftentimes technicians are tasked with finding parts that meet desired specifications. For example, let's say we were being asked to find a hydraulic cylinder with a cap surface area of at least 250 square inches, of which the manufacturer offers the following dizzying array of diameter choices. 2.5 inches, 4 inches, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, 20, 25, 32, 40, 50, and 63 inches. I suppose if you're hard-headed, you could walk down the catalog and manually calculate the surface area for all these diameter choices and stop when you find the right one, but ain't nobody got time for that. A far easier method would be use a spreadsheet. Write a formula and copy it down the column and pick the right one. But let's say you don't have access to a computer. A far quicker and easier method necessitating no computer resources is to algebraically manipulate the circular surface area formula and solve for diameter in terms of area. If you're not skilled in algebraic manipulation, by all means check out the algebraic manipulation lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. Presuming you're skilled in this techniques, one will solve for diameter in terms of area by isolating unknown diameter on one side of the equation using the following steps. Multiply both sides by 4. 4 cancels out on the right. We're left with 4 area equals pi times diameter squared. Divide both sides by pi. Pi cancels out on the right. We're left with 4 area divided by pi equals diameter squared. Square root both sides. We're left with square root of 4 area divided by pi equals diameter. Note we're square rooting the entirety of 4 area divided by pi, not just the 4a on top. One can make this exceedingly obvious by enclosing 4 area divided by pi in parentheses. We're ultimately left with diameter equals the square root of 4 area over pi. Substituting the desired surface area, in this case 250 square inches, into the algebraic manipulation demonstrates a cylinder with a diameter of roughly 17.8 inches would do the trick. Problem is, the manufacturer doesn't offer a cylinder of this exact proportions. 16 inches is too small and 20 inches is too big. However, if you pay attention to the original specifications, we need a surface area of at least 250 square inches. 20 inch diameter device should be more than capable of meeting these needs. As a means of checking our work, the circular surface area formula suggests a diameter 20 inches provides roughly 314.2 square inches, thereby proving we're correct in making this choice. Here's another real world application of the circular surface area formula. Consider two circles with different diameters overlapping one another. The exterior circle has a diameter of 6 inches. The interior circle has a diameter of 3.5 inches. Let's say we wish to find the surface area of the donut-shaped, ring-like 
annular surface area around the perimeter. One way to visualize this is to think about cutting out the smaller circle from the larger circle. What's left over? The ring-like shape. An easy way of determining the ring area is to find the surface area of both circles and then subtract the surface area of the smaller interior from the larger exterior. Area of the ring is area outer minus area inner. An application of the circular surface area formula suggests the larger exterior circle has a surface area of roughly 28.3 square inches. Similarly, another application of the circular surface area formula suggests the smaller interior circle has a surface area of roughly 9.6 square inches. Substituting these values into the ring area formula, outer minus inner, suggests the ring-like area has a surface area of roughly 18.7 square inches. Alright, let's see if you're tracking with these types of problems by way of these two illustrated examples. Problem 1, given the previous array of available diameters, 2.5, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, 20, 25, 32, 40, 50, and 63, see if you can determine the diameter necessary to provide a minimum surface area of 100 square inches. Problem 2, determine the surface area of a ring-like shape formed by the larger exterior circle with a diameter of 8 inches and a smaller interior circle with a diameter of 4 inches. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For problem 1, an algebraic manipulation of the circular surface area formula solving for unknown diameter demonstrates an 11.3 inch diameter would provide the required 100 square inches. Given the manufacturer doesn't have a cylinder of this exact dimensions, we're going to pick the closest one commercially available, in this case a 12. As it means a check in our work, an application of the circular surface area formula suggests a 12 inch diameter circle provides roughly 113.1 square inches, proving it is indeed the right tool for the job. For problem 2, an application of the circular surface area formula suggests the larger exterior circle has a surface area of roughly 50.3 square inches. Similarly, Another application of the circular surface area formula suggests the smaller interior circle has a surface area of roughly 12.6 square inches. Substituting these values into the ring area formula, outer minus inner, suggests the ring-like area has a surface area of roughly 37.7 square inches. Alright, now that we've got a solid hold on the circular surface area formula and applications, let's put on our 3D glasses and learn to calculate cylindrical volume. A cylinder is a circle expressed at a certain height. Volume is expressed in units of cubic inches. Sometimes cubic inches is written as CI by the morbidly lazy. The volume of a cylinder is circular area times height. If you want to calculate this all in one go, you could also write this formula as volume equals power 4 times diameter squared times height. However, I don't recommend you do this. Oftentimes it's easier to first calculate area, then calculate volume as area times height. Make sure you're using the saved results in your calculator not the approximation. Since this concept is pretty easy, let's go right to the illustrated examples. Consider our first set of illustrated examples at the beginning of this lecture. Let's see if we can determine cylindrical volume in units of cubic inches for these same examples given known height values. If you got the previous answer stored in your calculator memory, feel free to reuse these answers and save yourself some time. Circle 1 has a diameter of 5 inches and a height of 20 inches. Circle 2 has a diameter of 2.5 inches and a height of 12 inches. Circle 3 has a radius of 6 inches, which we all know is a diameter of 12 inches. It's got a height of 2 feet. Note the emphatic pronunciation, 2 feet. And finally, circle 4, the 55-gallon barrel. It's got a diameter of 22.5 inches and a height of 33.5 inches. Again, see if you can solve for cylindrical volume in units of cubic inches by multiplying circular area times height. I should note, for this set of example problems, U.S. customary units like inches, square inches, and cubic inches do not use engineering prefixes and must be expressed in their awkward entirety. By all means, pause the lecture, try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. An application of the cylindrical volume formula, area times height, demonstrates cylinder 1 has a volume of roughly 392.7 cubic inches. Similarly, another application of the cylindrical volume formula demonstrates cylinder 2 has a volume of roughly 58.9 cubic inches. Cylinder 3 has a height of 2 feet, which is equivalent to 24 inches. An application of the cylindrical volume formula demonstrates cylinder 3 has a volume of roughly 2,714.3 cubic inches. Those of you using the scientific calculator making use of engineering format may see this answer expressed as roughly 
2.7143 times 10 to the third and rush to the incorrect conclusion that this is a volume of roughly 2.7 kilo cubic inches. Again, I must remind you that U.S. customer units do not use engineering prefixes and must be expressed in their awkward entirety. This is quite literally a volume of 2,714.3 cubic inches and cannot be expressed in more expedient fashion. I don't like this any more than you, but you got to deal with it. Lastly, a final application of the cylindrical volume formula demonstrates cylinder 4, the 55-gallon drum, has a volume of roughly 13,319.9 cubic inches. Again, U.S. customary units do not use engineering prefixes and must be expressed in their awkward entirety. All right, that wasn't too hard, was it?